All right, but then here back with another Honkai Star Oak guide. And today I'm here with the full in-game guide for wrap up. So it's been roughly a half a day since she did release. So today I'm going to be taking you over her kit, best icons, best relics, and the stats you want on the relics, and then some team ideas. And if that's all I want to say before I get into the video, drop a like, drop a sub, hit the bell icon for more videos like this, and let's get straight into it. So Rappa is an imaginary character following the path of erudition. Her basic attack deals on imaginary damage equal to 100% of Rappa's attack to one designated enemy. Her skill deals imaginary damage equal to 120% of Rappa's attack to all enemies. Her ultimate enters the seal form state and immediately gains one extra turn. Obtains 3 points of Chroma Ink and increases weakness break efficiency by 50% and break effect by 30%. While in seal form state, basic attack is enhanced and skill and ultimate cannot be used. After using enhanced basic attack, consumes 1 point of Chroma Ink. When Chroma Ink is depleted, exits the seal form state. And as it does say, it gives you the enhanced basic attack, and what that is, is... Launches Ningu, Demon Bane Petal Blade. The first two hits deal imaginary damage equal to 100% of Rappa's attack to one designated enemy, and imaginary damage equal to 50% of Rappa's attack to adjacent targets. And the third hit deals imaginary damage equal to 100% of Rappa's attack to all enemies. Enhanced basic attack will not recover skill points. Attacking enemies that don't have imaginary weakness can also reduce toughness, whose effect is equal to 50% of the original toughness reduction. When breaking weakness, triggers the imaginary weakness break effect. Her talent, each time the enemy target is weakness broken, Rappa gains 1 point of charge up to a maximum point of 10. When Rappa next launches the third hit of Ningu Demon Bane Petal Blade, additional deals break damage equal to 60% of Rappa's imaginary break damage to all enemies. This damage can ignore weakness type to reduce 2 toughness, consuming all charge. Each point of charge increases the break damage multiplier by 50% and increases the toughness reduction that can ignore weakness type by 1. When breaking weakness, triggers the imaginary weakness break effect. The technique? After using the technique, enters the graffiti state for 20 seconds. While in the graffiti state, moves forward rapidly for a set distance and attacks any enemies touched. During the rapid movement, can block all enemies' attacks. Using an attack in the graffiti state can end the state's duration early. After entering combat BIA attacking enemies, deals 30 toughness reduction regardless of weakness type and break damage equal to 200% of Rappa's imaginary break damage to each target, and deals break damage equal to 180% of Rappa's imaginary break damage to adjusted targets. At the same time, this unit regenerates 10 energy. For her bonus traces, her A2, when the weakness of an elite or higher enemy is broken, Rappa additionally gains 1 point of charge and regenerates 10 energy. Her A4, while in the seal form state, after Rappa uses enhanced basic attack to deal damage to a weakness broken enemy target, converts the toughness reduction from this damage to 1 instance of 60% super break damage. And her A6, when an enemy target becomes weakness broken, increases the break damage taken by 2%. If Rappa's current attack is higher than 2400, for every 100 excess attack, additionally increases this value by 1% up to a maximum increase of 8% and lasts for 2 turns. For her Eidolons, her E1, during the seal form state, entered by the ultimate, damage dealt by Rappa ignores 15% of the target's defense, after exiting the seal form state, regenerates 20 energy. Her E2, the enhanced basic attack's first two hits have their toughness reduction against the one designated enemy increased by 50%. Her E4, while in the seal form state, increases all ally speed by 12%. And her E6, when the battle starts, Rappa gains 5 points of her talent's charge, and its upper limit increases by 5 points. After launching the third hit of Ningu Demon Bane Petal Blade, gains 5 points of charge. For the best light cones for Rappa, her best one is obviously going to be her own signature light cone. And if we take a look at what it does, it gives you a 60% increase to break effect, and when you enter battle, you immediately regenerate 30 energy. After using ultimate, obtains Raitone. After using two basic attacks, advances the wearer's action by 50% and removes Raitone. After the wearer uses ultimate, resets Raitone. So as we see, practically everything it gives you is very, very, very beneficial. As break characters practically only love break effect, speed, and I guess action forwards, this gives you a big increase to break effect and on top of that when you enter battle you can enter all very very quickly thanks to the fact it gives you a big 30 energy when you do just enter battle helping you set up a lot easier and on top of that after you do use the two basic attacks with the right on you get the 50 percent action forward letting you attack even more getting more damage output also lowering enemies toughness even faster making it all play very well so once again a very very massive increase to break effect is going to be very helpful the energy at the start of the battle is going to help you set up a lot easier and on top of that getting the action forward by 50 percent is going to help you get more turns again more turns more super break you can do more toughness you can lower very very good making this easily her best option 
Another option you can use is the Eternal Calculus Icon, which is free from the Herder Shop. It increases the wearer's attack by 12%, and after using an attack for each enemy target hit, additionally increases the attack by 8% and can stack up to 5 times, and lasts until the end of the attack. If there's 3 or more targets hit, this unit's speed increases by 16%, lasting for 1 turn. So the reason this is really good is you're getting the attack increases by just having the 12%, and on top of that, the extra you can get by hitting enemies. The attack percent is going to help you with her bonus trace to get that more break damage in, so that is directly helping there, and as she does do blast and also the last hit of her enhanced basic attack being aoe she's able to make use of the second effect giving her a big increase of speed 16 percent speed is very very good and as i mentioned speed on break characters is very very much loved so getting the speed is going to be really really good helping you actually easily get the 60 percent speed for free making this a very good option as well another great option is the after the sharply fall four star light cone which increases the wearer's break effect by 56 percent and after the wearer uses ultimate increases speed by 16 percent for two turns so this gives you both things you need, it gives you a big increase in break effect which is practically as much as the signature just 4% difference at S5. And as I mentioned, speed very very lovely and once you just do the ultimate you get a free increase to speed. The first time you use it isn't going to really matter too much because you're already getting the big increase to just getting the full turn. So the first time doesn't help too much but after that you still have the effect active. So the extra speed is going to help you act even faster and again will result in more damage output you can do, more toughness you can lower, making this practically her second best light going you can use. And now a more undesirable option you can use is the Make the World Clamor, which gives you 32 energy upon entering battle and increases damage up by the wearer's ultimate by 64%. So the second part is still there, but it's not too crazy, but it's mainly just for the first part, getting you a very, very quick ultimate. For the same reason that Rapa Signature gives you 30, this one gives you 32, so a little more, but it's obviously missing out on all the other effects. So it is an option you can do, but a lot less desirable, and you're better off using the other ones that I already mentioned. But if you don't have any of those options, then you could just go ahead and use this one until you farm the free to play hurdle one or until you pull the signature or pull the four star option until you get a better one you want to replace this as soon as possible but it is an option that you can use that is somewhat usable Moving on to the best relic options for Rappa. The far and none best one is still going to be the Iron Calvary set, with the two piece increasing break effect by 16%, and the four piece, if you do have 150% or higher break effect, ignores 10% of the enemy target's defense when dealing break damage to them. And if you have 250% or higher break effect, the super break damage dealt will ignore additional 15% of the target's defense. So, as the two piece is giving you a 16% increase to break effect, that's going to be nice for the amount you do want. And on top of that, the more break effect you have, the more defense ignore you can do, because if you guys don't know, so as I mentioned, the break effect and speed is the main stats you want on a break character. Firefly and Rappa can make use of some attack as they have some other conversions. But the other thing that isn't talked about too much, but is the best way to deal more damage to a person is Defense Ignore. Any character in the game loves Defense Ignore, but for break characters, that is one of the only other sources that is very, very beneficial. So the four piece that you're getting on this relic set, letting you ignore a bunch of defense on the actual just relic set, so the more break effect you have, the more defense you can ignore, is very, very, very powerful, and you definitely want to aim to get those thresholds if you are running the Iron Cavalry set, as it is going to be the best for her damage, far and none. But if you don't have that or you're farming for it, you can also just do 4 piece Thief, which increases break effect by 16%, and the 4 piece increases break effect by 16% also, and when the wearer inflicts weakness break on the enemy, regenerates your energy. So this is really good because you do want to get some form of energy back when you are doing anything, since Rappa wants to get the right rotations of having her alt up. So this one gives you up to a 32% increase to break effect if you are running the 4 piece, which is very, very, very good. And now when you deal damage, or when you deal a weakness break to an enemy, you regenerate 3 energy, which is going to be extremely good. But if you don't have that either, then it pretty much just becomes you can combine two piece of the Iron Calvary, two piece Thief, two piece Watchmaker, so just two piece, two piece of break effect, giving you 32% break effect. It's better if you just do Thief in that case, but if you don't have a four piece Thief, then you can just combine two piece break, two piece break. And since she is a break character and she would love speed, you could also take two piece of one of the break sets and do two piece of the Hacker Space, as Hacker Space two piece gives you 6% speed. So it's going to help you get even more speed while you also have the two piece of break effect, letting you hit the thresholds you do want. For the planner ornaments, overall the best one you want to use and mainly is just the recommended one because there's not much restrictions is the Talia set as it increases break effect by 16% and once you do have 145 speed or higher you get an additional 20% break effect giving you up to 36% break effect. This is extremely good because it is a very nice increase of break effect. You do need 145 speed or higher and Rappa unfortunately has a lower base speed but if you combine her with Ruan Mei and such and then have good speed rolls and the proper relics and such and it's giving you a big increase of break effect if you're able to satisfy the requirement. 
it. And the other situational ornament you can use is the Forge Set, which increases speed by 6%, and when you hit an enemy with Fire Weakness, you get a 40% increase to break effect for one turn. So this set you practically do not use on anyone that isn't Firefly or Himiko, but if the battle you're going into has enemies with Fire Weakness, you are going to be able to make use of this Relic Set very well. Since now you have a break effect increase that is even better than Talia, and on top of that you regain the 6% speed, it will outperform Talia a little more if you do have the Fire Weakness on the enemies but talia is way more consistent and you don't need to have the restriction of having fire weakness on the enemy you just go into it if you have the 145 speed boom you get the break effect you're good to go so talia is recommended but forge could be better if you are taking him into a battle that has the fire weakness on enemies for the main stats on the relics for the body you want to have attack percent for the feet you want to have speed for the orb you want to have attack percent and for the link rope you want to have break effect for the substats, you want to focus on getting speed. If you are running Talia, obviously you want to get 145 speed. So getting 145 to 150 speed or even higher is better, but 145 to 150 is definitely the recommended amount. More, again, will be better, especially if you're pairing her through on May. You can have less of a requirement if you're pairing her through on May, which for the most part you will, but it is still recommended to get as much speed as possible, and a good comfortable base is 145 to 150. Past that is more break effect. More break effect is going to be really good. If you are running the Iron Cavalry set, it is definitely recommended to actually get her to around 200% because if you have around 200% then you have Harmony Trailblazer that's buffing break effect, Ron May that's buffing a little bit. You want to make sure in battle you have enough break effect that is buffing you to be above the 250% break effect range so you get the full effect from the Iron Cavalry set. And that pass that is attack percent because if you get more attack percent you can get up to 3200 in battle at least you will be able to get full use of the actual bonus trace but definitely focus on getting the speed and break effect more because it's going to be more important. The attack percent if you're able to get it up to the 3200 point is going to be really good but first make sure you get your speed to at least 145 maximum there is no maximum you just get as much speed as you want and then make sure you get your break effect to the point where if you go into battle you at least have above 250% so you're able to make use of Iron Calvary. Moving on to the team building slash team idea section for Rappa. So I don't have Rappa, so pretend this is Rappa. We're just gonna have her there. Yes, the gameplay you saw was on my friend's account, not mine. But the best team you can run with her is obviously you're going to definitely want to have the Harmony Trailblazer. That is practically a must for this team, similar to Firefly. Otherwise, you're gonna see a very, very, very big damage fall off, which will be something you do not want to see. So it is your relatively generic break team. So the sustain, most people will be Gallagher, so you can take Gallagher on this if you have the more premium one which is the better one is going to just be Linksha so Linksha is the best option you can take once again you could take Gallagher and if you don't have a Gallagher built, then you'll just have to practically just improvise, use whatever best sustain you do have. Since these two are the main ones you do use for break, Gallagher is the more free to play option, and Linksha is the very nice premium option that you can use. And then the last thought, best one, obviously, is going to be Ruan Mei. So this is the best Rappa team you'd be able to take. Again, pretend this is Rappa. So Harmony Trailblazer, practically a must. Linksha, if you don't have Linksha and you have built Gallagher, take Gallagher instead. And if you don't have either of them built, or if you just don't have either of them for some odd reason then just go ahead and use whatever sustain you have available to you and if you have Ruan Mei she is the other most for this team practically much wanted just like the Harmony Trailblazer but she is still able to be subbed out so if you do not have Ruan Mei you could just take a defense debuffer instead you could actually just go ahead and take someone like Pela if I could find her there she is you could just take Pela for the defense shred anyways obviously will not be as good but it is an option you can do other than that, there really isn't too many options since you practically just want to have the generic Firefly team or the Boo Hill team. So, for the most part, you want to have the Ruan Mei, you want to have the Harmony Trail Blizzard. Harmony Trail Blizzard, definitely a must. Ruan Mei, again, you can sub her up for Pela. Big damage drop off, but still will be there. And then sustain Link Shark Gallagher, and if you don't have either, just take whatever best sustain you have available to you. And yep, that is the full build guide for Rappa. Hope you get some of it helpful. Peace out.